Canada, Jamaica. This is game two of a two-game series. Canada taking the first one, 2-1 in Jamaica. Copa America, that's what's on the line. There are a lot of question marks if this team can beat top opponents. That's what they need to get there to do that. It's up on the Reyes foot. Across to Davies. Blake again at the corner end. It's a stack here. Who's it now? Nicholson pushed. Conan gives it away. Jamaica numbers. Has a step to Nicholson. It is March 2024. Four months on from Canada's frustrating loss to Jamaica and Toronto, the team has gathered here in Frisco, Texas. On this field, the men's national team will take part in five days of training that will lead into a one-match do-or-die playoff against Trinidad. The winner of the game will qualify for the 2024 Copa America. Guys, welcome. I'm going to touch a little bit on Jamaica, just a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go too far back and go over stuff because all of you have had 10, 12, 14 games since then, and you've all lived different emotions at your club, last minute goals, and all these other things that have happened. But what I want to talk about is what we could take from that game and what we could learn from that game that could help us in this next game. Okay, and for me, what I want to talk about is the weak moments. Okay, the weak moments in a game, and those moments they happen all the time in every game, every team, Man City, Bayern Munich, Inter, all the top teams. It happens the weak moments. Okay, we were you know the high of the game that we won in Jamaica, and then we were like in cruise control, huh? Everything's okay, and then bang, right? And the first thing, guys, the first thing is you got to accept that weak moments, they're going to happen. That's the first thing. Because your ego, your ego is telling you what's going on. If your ego is not ready, that's what's going to happen. And what ends up happening is you get on your heels, you're second guessing, you're passive. And then in four minutes, it's two goals. And guys, well, I'm bringing this up because it's going to be the same against Trinidad. There's going to be moments in that game where we got to now step up communication, ready to face it, increase intensity, and even for us, us as a staff, right? Be ready. We got to make an adjustment. We got to break the momentum. So it's about moving forward because as this team continues to grow, we're going to be in these types of situations where we just got to be resilient. And that's what I want within the group. I want that. And that's how we're going to come together. Because right here, I feel it. I feel freshness. I feel an attitude. I feel guys that have come here that they want to be part of the next journey. Because this is what's in front of us, guys. There's the opportunity of Copa America. Two years. Just felt like I was in Qatar last week. But in two years, there's the World Cup. While the four-month wait since the loss to Jamaica has seemed like an eternity to the squad, for 29-year-old Maxime Crepeau, he has in many ways 
been waiting for this moment for his entire career. With veteran goalkeeper Milan Borjan not selected for this camp, Crepeau is now the senior man in Canada's goalkeeping contingent. This chance to play a starting role as the team looks to book its place at Copa America holds even more meaning to Crepeau as he sustained a heartbreaking injury just two days before he was due to fly to the World Cup in Qatar. Oof, this was tough, man. That was really difficult. Um, uh, the final was November 5th. Um, just got surgery November 6th, November 8th. I was supposed to be on the plane. And so, missing out on the World Cup the first couple of days, uh, obviously, uh, the physical pain is, is incredible. Uh, but the, the physical pain does not, the physical pain is nothing compared to the mental and the effort and, and I would say a hole that arrives after that uh, because you, you, you sacrifice so much for your country to be there. I've been in the Brown for a long time as well, ever, ever since the, the Tiba, the Milan, even the, the Euro a little bit, you know. When you lay the foundation to go to Qatar and then we did it, we qualified and then you miss the actual event, it's very difficult. I went uh, into, uh, into a difficult spot and thank God my wife was there, my family was there. <laughs> <laughs> Allo Olivia, ça va? Okay. Tu dis bon match? Ah oh, ben merci mon amour. Papa il joue dans deux jours. I love you too. <laughs> ok, ciao. Bye. <laughs> Live is funny. I think it's just part of the process as well in, in, in a way where there's only one guy playing and there's three, four, five guys that can, that can uh, suit um, the spot. But at the end of the day, uh, I mean, that weight is, is real and one, once uh, you have an opportunity, well, you, you have to, to grasp it and, and that's, what, uh, that's what we play for, for, for opportunities. There's no other way to put it. It's a final. You gotta push yourself physically, mentally, uh, be in sync with your team, and you gotta play a full 90 uh, in the perfect uh, execution. Because one slip up can can sometimes happen, but it can be uh, devastating. And so uh, the focus of concentration might has to go through the roof. Uh, there's no negotiation about the level of focus on Saturday. And then uh, I believe that this group has a, such a high ceilings. And so it's a first step into the serial of games, the potential games that we can have that would be amazing for this young group. Thank you.